Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Strawberry Semi Fredo. That's right, sometimes I like to take classic dessert recipes and make them a little healthier. And then there's other times where I try to make them easier by removing or streamlining some of the steps. Well, this time I attempted to do both, and I think I was fairly successful. I mean, at the very least, I was semi successful. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the most boring step. And that would be to line some ramekins with plastic wrap, which can be a little tricky because plastic wrap really wants to stick to that surface. So a little tip to make this easier, if you spritz in a light misting of water, that plastic will not stick and it will be much faster and easier to place that plastic in. Or instead, I guess you could just buy really cheap plastic wrap, which doesn't stick to anything. But either way, we're gonna go ahead and line whatever we're using as a mold or molds. And once those are set, we'll go ahead and transfer those onto a sheet pan and we'll reserve those until needed. And now that the most boring step is done, we can move on to something much more thrilling, and that would be to trim up one pound of the sweetest strawberries we can find. And I just do that by going around with the point of a knife, trying to lose as little of that sweet flesh as possible. And by the way, the culinary term for this is called hulling the strawberries. And yes, they do sell a little tool that does this, which is not surprisingly called a huller, or as Missy Elliott calls it, huller. But anyway, the tip of a knife works perfectly. And I will mention, if you don't have the patience for that, you could just cut the top off, which is the way we do it in restaurants because it's faster if you have to do a lot. But personally, I take my time and use the tip and try to just take out those green leaves. And then what we'll do once those are all trimmed up is add those to our food processor, along with the following ingredients. We'll go ahead and toss in a little touch of sugar, which I know looks like a lot, but it's really not. We are actually making this with the minimum sugar required to keep this from completely crystallizing once it freezes. And then besides the sugar, we will also do some Greek yogurt. Full fat, please. I mean, I guess you could use fat for yogurt, but we're not putting any eggs in this, so we need the fat. We also need a little bit of lemon flavor, which we're gonna do with both freshly grated zest and a few teaspoons of lemon juice. We will also do a few drops of vanilla extract. Yes, of course, the real stuff. So we'll drip some of that in, which brings us to our one and only secret ingredient, a teaspoon of aged balsamic vinegar. Oh yeah, don't worry, it's fine. It only sounds crazy. Speaking of which, we're gonna finish this up with a very, very, very tiny pinch of salt. Like hardly even a pinch. Like basically 10 or 12 crystals of kosher salt. And that is gonna be it for our fresh strawberry base. We'll take that and process it completely smooth. As usual, starting by pulsing on and off until it gets going. And we'll finish on high until we have a very, very smooth puree which if everything goes according to plan is gonna look a little something like this. And then once that's been accomplished, we will move on to our other major component, the whipped cream. And we'll start off with the most important whipped cream tip. Make sure your cream is ice cold. All right, the colder the cream, the faster it whips. All right, so we don't wanna take our cream out of the fridge until we're ready to whisk. And unlike egg whites, where we need to use a big circular motion to get lots of air whipped into the whites, here that really doesn't matter as much. It's really just the motion of the whisk that's gonna make these whip up into nice soft peaks. So as long as you're working that whisk enthusiastically, it's gonna be fine. Don't worry about trying to do any special techniques. And as I just mentioned, what we're shooting for is what we call in the business soft peaks, which we almost have right here. But those are just a little droopy. So we'll give this a few more seconds until those peaks get just a touch firmer, basically until we have something that looks very close to this. And then what we'll do once that's happened is go ahead and transfer our strawberry mixture in. And then using a nice big spatula, we will stir slash fold this all together. All right, so when we first start this, it's more of a stir. And then eventually as that comes together, we'll move to more of a folding action. And while we don't want to be overly aggressive, we do not have to be super careful and terrified of overmixing this either. Just keep gently stirring and folding until most of the major streaks disappear. Which reminds me, some people like to leave streaks. I don't. Since there's so much more fat in the cream than there is in the strawberry mixture, if you do that, you get two different textures. But anyway, we'll go ahead and semi-gently combine those two mixtures, at which point we can go ahead and ladle that into our ramekins. And since we are gonna add a cookie crust bottom to these, we wanna make sure we stop about a quarter to an eighth of an inch from the top, so we have room to do that. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, we do have enough mixture to make more than six. But this is all I'm doing, because I'm going to save the rest for a little bit of an experiment, which you may or may not ever hear about. 
But anyway, we're going to go ahead and almost fill up our ramekins. At which point we'll give them the old tappa tappa just to settle those down. And because it's kind of a ritual. And then what we'll do is cover these in plastic and pop them in the freezer for about an hour and a half. At which point they should be firm enough to add our cookie crumb crust. Which I'm going to make this time with some shortbread cookies. And what we'll do is place some of those in a plastic bag. Then we'll smash those with something like a rolling pin until we have crumbs. Which is super easy if you're using these kind of cookies. Since shortbread really likes to crumb. Okay, so we'll bash those and bash them good. At which point we'll dump those in a mixing bowl. And then add some still warm melted butter. And take a spoon and mix that thoroughly. And then once we're confident every crumb has been coated, we can set that aside until our mixture is firmed up. Which after about an hour and a half in the freezer shouldn't be a problem. So I pulled mine out, unwrapped it, and gave it a touch or two to be sure. And if your semi-freddo is at least semi-firm, you can go ahead and add your crumbs to the top. And while that stuff is still room temp, it's pretty easy to spread and press evenly. Oh, and I should mention, if you're not into shortbread, ginger snaps would also be perfect here. As would almond cookies, or vanilla wafers. Or if you want, you could even do these without a crust. But anyway, you decide. I mean, you are, after all, the Colonel Kurtz of your semi-frozen desserts. But anyway, we'll go ahead and apply those cookie crumbs as shown. And pop that back in the freezer for at least two hours or until completely frozen through. And then while we're waiting, if you want, and you do, we will have time to make a fresh strawberry garnish, which is simply sliced, quartered, or in my case, diced strawberries that we're going to toss with a couple spoons of sugar. And what's going to happen after you give that a mix and you leave that on the counter for about an hour? It is going to transform into the most magical diced strawberries in syrup, or syrup, as your English teacher prefers we pronounce it. And that is going to be absolutely perfect to spoon over our finished dessert. Which, since mine has been in the freezer for a few hours, is ready to take out and enjoy. And to unmold these, I'm going to get a little help from my old friend, Rosie De Palma. So to unmold these, we'll just warm that ramekin up in our hands. And by the way, you don't have to be in a hurry here. Okay, this stuff needs to sit out at least 10 or 15 minutes before it's really edible. In fact, if you want to stop and eat a couple crumbs, it's not a problem. But anyway, once that comes loose, we'll unwrap it and place it on the plate. And we'll top that with the aforementioned beautiful fresh strawberry garnish. And that's it, our possibly healthier, definitely much easier to make, strawberry semi freddo is done. And ready to enjoy in, like I said, about 10 or 15 minutes. All right, it's called semi freddo for a reason, which translates to half cold and or half frozen. So we really do want to wait until it starts to thaw a little bit. All right, if you try to eat this too soon, it's going to be way too hard to enjoy. Plus, and I speak from experience, it will probably shoot off the plate onto the floor. So please let this soften up a little bit before you grab a spoon or a fork, which I sort of did. This is still too cold, but I'm going in anyway. And even though we didn't use the traditional egg yolk custard or the traditional amount of sugar, this was still extremely delicious with a very bright, very pronounced strawberry flavor. And despite the shortcuts, the texture was actually quite nice. All right, try to imagine something right in between a strawberry ice cream and a strawberry popsicle. And even though this is not the most decadent and rich semi fredo recipe, when you combine it with those fresh syrupy strawberries on the top and those beautiful buttery shortbread crumbs on the bottom, it really does make for a very delicious and quite refreshing bite of dessert. In fact, I think the only way not to enjoy this is to expect it to be like strawberry ice cream when you try it because this just doesn't have enough fat or sugar. But if you can avoid that comparison and just enjoy this for what it is, a very simple, relatively light, extremely refreshing summer dessert, I think you and your guests will enjoy it just as much. I'm serious, or at least semi-serious. So I really do hope you give this a try soon. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy. Enjoy.